The word says, the race is not for the swift. When we live our life, the race that we run, it's important to focus on God. Focus forward, don't look left, don't look right, because He is the author and the finisher of your faith. He is the author and the finisher of your destination. He will lead you and guide you through every course of your life. Choose Him and surrender to Him. Keep walking, walk worthy, walk by faith, walk not by sight, but walk in the obedience of Jesus. Let's talk about our walk with Jesus. Welcome to Walk Talk once again and today again we want to continue our talk about sin and temptation. What is the cycle of sin and temptation? And today that's where I want to pick back up again. Last week uh, I spoke about how sin does not just happen. There is a careful process which leads us to the act of sin, which ultimately leads us to the consequences of sin. Last week I spoke about you see something, you desire something, you desire someone, then you start to imagine and plan how you can conquer or, or, or have that thing to yourselves and then you touch it. And today in the cycle of sin part two, I want to begin that there was a man called Joseph who did all of these things and still got away from temptation. So today, the last chance for one of us is to be like Joseph in Genesis chapter 39 verse 11 where he says he knew that no one was in the house. And then what happens? That means that he was already exposed to Potiphar's wife and he knew that there was something fishy there. But he did not run away. But what happened? He got caught in that sin. He got caught in, in, in committing adultery, in committing, in committing fornication. And what happened? It says that he left his cloak and he ran away. That means he had reached to step number four. He had seen it. He had desired it. He had probably not really imagined it, but he knew he was aware of what was happening. And if he was caught with him running without his clothes, that means he did touch something. And that's the place where you can go back. But let me tell you what happens. We go to step five. You touch it. But then what happens? When Eve ate the fruit, what happens? Temptation has an appetite. Once you start to sin, once you start to commit sin, once you start doing things that you should not be doing, once you start to do the things that you, you do not want to do, what, what, what begins to happen, my dear friends? You know what starts to happen. You start to develop an appetite. Oh, I want more. I did it one time. Nobody saw me. What should I do? I'm going to do it again. Why? You have, you have now discovered an appetite for this sin. And then what does it say? In Genesis chapter 3, then she gave it to her husband. Always know this, my dear friends. When you start sinning, what we try to do is we try to justify it to ourselves. Justify it to ourselves. How? By trying to find people who do the same thing. Trying, trying to find people who like doing drugs, trying to find people, trying to hang with people who like getting drunk, trying to uh, hang out with people who are, who are loosely charactered people. Why? Because we want to justify it to ourselves that what we are doing is okay. But today the word of the Lord is coming to you for you to know and analyze yourself today and ask yourself, which stage are you in right now? If you're in stage five and six, you need to run away from that sin. You need to run away from that person. You need to run away from that habit. You need to run away from, from that thing that is stopping you. I'm telling you, the word of the Lord says it is better to pluck one eye and enter the kingdom of God than not entering the kingdom of God with, with two amazingly functioning eyes. What does that mean? 
It's better to cut off that friend that is leading you to the wrong thing. It is better to cut off that habit, that environment, that place which makes you feel the way you feel, which makes you have an appetite for the sin that you have today. The wages of sin is death. But it is very important for us to realize that it didn't just happen. It just didn't happen by mistake. You saw it, you desired it, you imagined it, you touched it, and you found a friend to do it with. The word of the Lord is coming today to you and to everyone who's listening to me, that God wants to completely and totally restore you. Ask the Holy Spirit to cleanse your mind, cleanse your body, renew your mind, and God will truly break you free from what you're going through. Father, in the name of Jesus, I break every addiction, every oppression, every temptation which is making people sin. And I pray that let the power of Jesus, let the Holy Spirit touch them and make them new in the name of Jesus. Lord, let the curse of sin be broken at this very moment. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and have a wonderful, wonderful day.